When Bach decided to draw together this group of concertos that we know as the Brandenburg Concertos, uh, he drew on earlier compositions for the most part. Some of this music might have been new for his job application, but uh, in fact a lot of it exists in alternate versions uh, and he probably drew on concertos that he had written for other purposes in the past few years. But when he drew it together into this collection that became known as the Brandenburg Concertos, he decided to use six concertos, to put together a group of six, and this was an absolutely normal sort of thing for him to decide to do, because almost always in the late Baroque period, for whatever reason, it's very indistinct why, concertos were nearly always published in sets of six or twelve, which is two times six, obviously. When Bach wanted to put his best foot forward in his job application uh, for Brandenburg, uh, he did so by putting together what would be considered a normal collection of six concertos. But of course, that's where the normalcy started. There was nothing at all normal about this set of concertos because each of them is so very different from the others. They differ in their orchestration, they differ in the soloistic demands, in the very instruments that they use as soloists, in the compositional techniques that they use. Every single one of them is quirky in its own way, so that if you've heard one Brandenburg concerto, there's no way that you can predict what one of the other Brandenburg concertos is going to be all about. And that's why it really behooves anybody who sets out on the journey of the Brandenburg concertos to go to the journey's end, to really find out what Bach had in mind for the whole set of six, because every one is a new adventure.